Tony Baptiste. Okay, Wish you luck up there. Wish you luck, John. All right. Apparently it's ready. Ready, go ahead, please. please.
Again, all right, certainly. Shall we move on to the next uh, question? All right. The next question is uh, tapes with Angelo Ruggiero speaking. Obviously, uh, at least one of the tapes that you heard in answer to one of your earlier questions uh, has one with supposedly Mr. Ruggiero. There are others, and we will begin by playing 4260. Is that correct? It will be 4260 if you wish to use the transcript. It is February the 12th, 4260. Ready? We'll uh, we'll do it. Please, uh, if you wish it, forty-two sixty. What the hell was that? Because that's what we try to find out. No, we don't. The guy who worked at the work. 
All right, then the next one is 4340 from February 22nd, 4340. Whenever you're ready, Mr. Schleiner. Go ahead, please. Yeah. Now, who you got to I'm going to tell you what I'm going to do. 
The next, next one is 4348 from February 25th. If you wish to use the transcripts, it's 4348. Anytime you're ready. There's, there is, you'll see on the transcript, and obviously the transcript doesn't count. You'll see on the transcript, he sounds like Danny. You'll hear this, you will decide if the words make any mention of Danny, 
and then you have to decide if the Danny is anybody whose name has been mentioned in this case. Those are fact decisions for you folks to make. With regard to the next tape after this one, uh, there is a reference to a, a Dan. You'll hear the tape. You'll make up your own mind as to whether it answers your question or not. The fact that you're hearing it doesn't mean that it is referring to uh, uh, Mr. Marino. Those are fact decisions that you have to make. I've decided you'll hear these two tapes. The fact that you hear them doesn't mean that I think it's Marino. Those are decisions you folks are there to make. Okay, please play 4348. Please play it again. Play the next one then, uh, 4353 if you wish to use it, obviously there's no obligation to use it, your choice.
Please play it again. All right, um, then uh, would you step into the jury room and uh, resume your deliberations? nothing wrong with again uh, I don't mean to signal anything I just want you folks to be comfortable to ask whatever you want to ask next uh, tape please would be what just uh, strip tape
And it's in the transcript. I'm told that it's in the. If you're looking for it, I'm told it's in the transcript book under U C slash McElroy or U slash C McElroy. Uh, does anybody not have it? Anybody not have the transcript who's looking for it? Apparently not. Okay, play the tape. Okay, that, that, those are the three tapes. The, uh, we, yes. It'll be sent in with you. I'm afraid I have only one copy, though. Uh, but it, it may go in with you, yes. All right, if, if that... Uh, it could be read in the room by yourselves. Okay, it's going in with you. Uh, we, I believe that answers your question. Would you put your material there and go back in? Please be sure the alternates are separated. to hurt the situation. Um, one of the mysteries of, uh, of life. Juries reach verdicts most of the time. From watching you folks during the selection process, you seem to fit into the category of jurors who've sat and reached verdicts all these many years. There's no reason on the surface why you can't be one of those jurors, juries. Um, this process is bigger than individuals. 
Okay. With regard to the alternates, I can't let you go, but we're changing the circumstances under which you live. Um, you can, you're on the honor system. You cannot talk about the case outside of the jury room. You're going to be able to have dinner with these folks. They can be riding on the buses with you. Um, but uh, you can talk about anything except this case. Um, it's sort of unfair to them that they're all by themselves. And so we all agree that we're going to change those circumstances as best we can. So welcome back. But uh, it's a limited partnership, so to speak. Um, I, I really uh, hope, earnestly hope, that a good night's sleep, a little new blood, uh, will uh, get you to the situation where you can do the jury service uh, as you see appropriate under the rules that I've described. Have a good night. See you tomorrow. All right. All right. They had, someone had spoken to the jury. Well, no, it, it was Pablo Guzman had that on the news. Is that correct? Last night. And uh, apparently they were just making arrangements that uh, when the case is over, they'd want to come out, I guess. I don't know. We don't know for sure because we're not in a room with them. And uh, But Pablo had it on the news uh, the other night. Is there any so that's any all I know is what you guys know. Is there any significance to that? Is that irregular for them to make arrangements? I think in a high-profile case they do that. But from time to time. Wouldn't that, or couldn't one feel that that may mean that they're leading towards one verdict or another? Maybe I don't know. I really don't know. <clears throat> they wouldn't all want to sort of get out here immediately. I really, I really can't, can't tell you. I don't know. Mr. Tarkowski says that he has not asked for a mistrial on the basis of this Guzman report. On the what? He has not asked for a mistrial. Are you aware of any motions by the prosecution? deal with this report of uh, jurors arranging to talk with the press after a verdict? No. No, I'm not aware of what, what they're doing about it. I mean, we discussed it with the court, but uh, How is your you'd client? have to ask them and, you know, There's see what they're going to do. So you discussed it with the court? Yeah, we, we always, you what know, we'd, the, we'd always bring that up. What was the resolution? Not a question of us bringing it up. It was just, it was uh, left as is, basically, you know. Do you have any problem with uh, what the jurors apparently have done? Well, I'm optimistic that uh, we're going to be acquitted here, so I, you know, I shouldn't have any problem at all. Do you think there are indications that they wouldn't? Oh, he's always great. They wouldn't want to talk uh, afterwards if it was a, a guilty verdict, but the, perhaps if they're leaning towards acquittal, they would want to talk. Well, I think in a high-profile case that uh, maybe they, maybe some want to speak on the camera, some don't, and uh, we'll wait and see. But no, no reading into that whether or not no, they're. I don't, re I don't read into anything at all. So we feel pretty good right now. All right. We gotta do a thing, right? Okay, so I'll do it. 215, right? Yeah. 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 Under the impression that you wanted to question us. What was going on? What was going on in the jury room when the judge received a note complaining that one of the jurors had some previous bias in the case? I can't comment on that. Well, was there any animosity, personality clashes? What was it like in the jury room? Were you fighting among with each other? It was a deliberation, if you've ever been in deliberations. It's a deliberation. What was the quote? What was the first quote? Can you tell us what 
We didn't have a vote until the final vote. We had a process. We'd go through everything, everything until if one person had to hear a piece of evidence or hear a tape over and over again, we would do it. Finally, at the end of the process, when we all agreed we had enough information to make a decision, that is when we took our one and only vote. What time was that? What persuaded you? What persuaded you? Me personally, yeah. after listening to the tapes and McElroy's testimony, I discounted for various reasons. One, because he was on drugs at the time, he was an addict, because of the crimes he had committed. I didn't know if he was lying, but I did know if he was telling the truth. I simply had my doubts. As to the tapes, a lot of things that were in the transcripts, after repeatedly listening to them, some of them I could not hear, some things I heard on my own that were not in the transcripts. As the judge said, it was my interpretation, my opinion. Yes, I listened to Mr. Wright and the other experts, but finally it had to be based on my decision. I did not find anything in those tapes that would lead me to believe Mr. Gotti had a hand or caused this assault to take place. I'm not saying he didn't do it. I simply had my doubts. And if I'm going to err, I'm going to err on the side of the defendants, which is what I did. Do you feel justice was done by your verdict? I feel justice was done by 12 people that the jury system does work. Did that mean the jurors? Did that We were all aware of it. Whether he is involved in organized crime, whether he's the head of an organized crime family, it's had nothing to do with this particular indictment. In other words, as the judge said, simply because he was a member or heads an organized crime family, you cannot convict him for that. I'm no avenging angel. Only on the facts of this case. I'm not going to comment on that because simply it's my opinion going out on the airwaves. I'm not going to comment on that. Yes, and if you also listen to bust them up, something comes afterwards. He says, find out who these guys are, find out who these guys are with. There are other tapes after that where he says, leave it alone. He's talking to, Aunt, to someone else, leave it alone. There are other tapes involved. If you're only going to focus in on one little sentence on one tape, you're not getting the whole picture. You have to look at all of it. Did any of the jurors express any personal fear that they convicted John Gotti? No, at no time did we ever even think about that. That wasn't even a consideration. Do you think there's a mafia? Again, because I'm speaking in front of cameras and, and film and, and, or, or media, print media, I'm not going to specify. I have my opinion. Did What's you your name? Mr. What's your name? My name is Richard Selensky. Can you spell your last name, Richard? S-I-L-E-N-S-K-Y. It's not in the phone book. What do you do? I'm going to be 42 years on Tuesday. I'm an actor. I don't make a living at it. But I also work at the New York Times. I'm a mailer at the New York Times. And that's how I pay my bills. As I see you people here, I think you're making a big deal out of what to me is not that big a deal. Mr. Smith, why not? The prosecution decision to put someone like McElroy on the stand, someone who really had I think you have to ask the prosecutor. He's trying to do the best he can do. He should do that job the best he can do. And the defense counsel should do the best he can do. Well, you think they had a bad Did you get the impression they didn't have a case here in the evidence? Again, I'm not going to make a comment on that. What, when you first walked into the jury room, what was your sense of what the vote might have been had you taken? I didn't have a sense because until, until we started talking and finding out what people were, what more they needed, I didn't have a sense. What he had is my sense. Were there any heated arguments that get hot and heavy at any time there. I'm not going to comment on that either. Why are you, why are you speaking about the foreman? Why is the foreman here? Everyone was given a choice to come or not come. I chose to come. He chose not to come. What do you think? What do you think? We wanted to see if there was a connection. We wanted to connect John Gotti to ordering the assault. We had to make some sort of connection. Did he cause the Westerners to do what they did? So we had to hear it over and over again. 
I'm just saying I had reasonable doubts. What did you think of Mr. Nani himself? Did you get the impression of him? What kind of person he is? I mean, to me, if I didn't know anything about him, he dresses well. He's got a great haircut. Uh, he looks successful. Uh, and if I was in his position, I don't know if I would have held up as well. So what can I say? I'm a mailer. I work nights. The mailer. The mailers work at nights where the papers come off the presses. They go down. They, the bundles are counted. They go through a conveyor. They're tied up. And basically, I see that the presses don't stop. So you can be working on this tonight? I'm not going to be working tonight. I'm going to a bar. <laughs> Sir, sir, what, what convinced you? Was there any evidence that convinced you in the end that John Gotti was not guilty? Step up to the mic. Say your name first. I'd rather not say it. Tell us your name. I'd rather not say it. Well, well, how did you arrive at the decision that you arrived at? Well, the, uh, the standard of proof is reasonable doubt. Not only was there reasonable doubt, in my mind, there's no way that you could connect Mr. Gotti up with what happened. I don't think there was any evidence. How did you hear There was nothing. What I, could, what I could determine from the tapes, there was nothing. There was nothing to connect up Mr. Gotti to what happened. Zilch. You have to take everything in context. I mean, you start putting out things that, uh, statements that don't seem to go together, or like you have gaps in dates and things of that nature. I mean, you need, before any juror can convict anybody, I mean, you have to know, you have to be reasonably sure, as certain as you can, actually, that a person is guilty of a crime. If you don't have that, I can't say that. I'm an insurance underwriter. I don't know the man. I don't. I mean, I just don't know. After other cases, jurors have come out and they've talked about how they became friends with other members of the jury. How would you describe your feelings towards other members of the jury? Very warm. Very warm. Good atmosphere. Oh, definitely. That was not the case here. I mean, that was not the trial at all. I'm not going to comment on that. How was the trial? Where did you stay? And how was the deliberation? No comment. Can you tell us what the deliberations were like without going into the substance? When you get a number of people together, I mean, it's Naturally, there's give and take. I mean, for, for a lot of us, this was the first time, uh, first time uh, thing to do. I mean, you know, you work it out. When you were when you were um, listening to the tape, the jury foreman would look back at you as if it was you and him in different. No, 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 no. What was that We when we listened to the tapes, if someone in the jury wanted to rehear something. The jury foreman would look around at everybody to let him know whether or not we needed to hear the tape again. When you went into the deliberations the first day, what, how would you vote if you took the vote right away? We, uh... No, you personally. No comment on that. When you said it was give and take, I mean, was there, um, sometimes there's a leader of the guys that were going to like that? No. 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 I mean... Whenever you get 12 people in one room, they're not going to agree on everything. Well, I mean, no more. No, it's no more than any situation where you would have 12 people. My own opinion, I think I already said what I thought about it. You know, but you know, you can't you can't just look at anything one time. I mean, you have to go over certain things, and you know. I'd like to go right now, okay?
Friends, aren't they? motion on the basis of the jurors? Not from us. Have you heard that six jurors have asked to uh, talk to the press after the verdict? I'm not going to comment on that. What time are you back in? Uh, 2.15. Thank you. What? What you want? 